I remember the first time I went to purchase bits for my desktop CNC. I was like, what's a downcut bit? Do I need an upcut bit? Will a compression bit even work on my machine? In this video, we're going to take a look at all three of these bits and how to use them, where to use them. We're also gonna take a look at this compression bit and what makes it so special. Quickly, I wanna thank Bits and Bits for being a supporter of my channel. If you're interested in any of the products I talk about today, check out the links in the description for more information. So let's start with the upcut bit. So as this bit is cutting through your material, it is pulling and ejecting chips upwards. Think towards the ceiling, towards the sky. It's pulling all those fibers upwards. Generally speaking, an upcut bit leaves a rough top surface of your workpiece. It's because it's pulling those fibers upwards. But it leaves a clean bottom surface when you're cutting all the way through the profile of your workpiece. So here's a great example of this happening. You can see how it's pulling everything upwards as it's shearing, as it's cutting. That spiral is ejecting upwards. For a lot of first time desktop CNC users, this is the first experience you have with bits. A lot of companies send this bit out with the machine that you purchase. So I wanna give you a few specific scenarios of where an upcut bit is used. So the first one, like I mentioned before, when you're cutting all the way through your workpiece and you want a clean bottom surface and the top surface doesn't matter all that much. The second one, is when you're doing a deep pocket and you need those chips to get pulled out of there so your cutter isn't recutting them. So these are the settings I'm running the upcut bit test at. All right, so I stopped this upcut test um, after one pass and you can see how it's pulling all these fibers vertically. See how all these, this roughness on the top edge, um, and that's the result that we'll get. All right, so the upcut bit is finished, cutting all the way through. One thing to note here, I am not using dust collection, so you can see the bit and what it's doing, but when you're using your CNC for any material, use dust collection, especially MDF. Here is the top, pulled right off, no cleanup whatsoever. You can see how that edge is frayed. Now, comparing that to the bottom, you can see how we cut all the way through and how that bottom is nice and clean compared to the top. So next, let's look at the downcut bit. So as the downcut bit is cutting through your material, it is pushing and ejecting all your chips and material downwards into the cut. Think towards the ground, through your workpiece. Again, generally speaking, a downcut bit will leave a clean top surface because it's shearing everything downwards. And when cutting all the way through your profile, it'll leave a frayed or rough bottom part of your workpiece. So here's a great example, great shot of this happening. You can see how it's pushing all those fibers downward. This is in the complete opposite direction is the upcut. In that video, you could see everything going upwards. This one, you can see everything going downwards. The downcut bit becomes your go-to bit once you get a little experience. And the reason is, is because it applies to a lot of the scenarios of the projects that you're actually doing. Think about, uh, sign making, for example. You basically only care about the front of that sign. You want everything to be clean, and you don't care as much about the underside. So as you're cutting all the way through, if the backside's a little rough, it's not a big deal. It's easy to take a sanding block and just knock that off, and you have a clean top surface, and then a little work on the backside. I could use a little work on my backside. Another specific scenario where the downcut bit is used is anytime you want a shallow pocket where chip evacuation isn't a big deal and those you're not creating as much chips. So quarter inch pockets, things like that, downcut bit really thrives here. So here are the settings I'm running the downcut bit test at. Okay, so after one pass of the downcut bit, you can see how it's leaving, the, leaving this clean top edge. Now we'll continue this and cut all the way through the back and then we'll compare the top to the bottom. So you can see right here, perfect example. Clean, not clean. So that is what a down cut bit will do. Now, if it was just a pocket, as you can imagine, it didn't go all the way through, it would look like this on the top. All right, so what the heck is a compression bit? Well, it's also known as an up down bit. And that's because as it's moving through your material, it's cutting both up and down. The bottom portion of the bit is pulling upwards, it's an upcut portion. The 
next section of the bit is a down cut portion where it's pushing everything downwards. So you've got both actions happening at the same time. So let's take a look at this example. As you can see, the bottom portion is gonna be pulling the fibers up, pulling up. The down cut portion is going to be pushing everything down. So this dual action, when used correctly, will leave you with a clean top surface and a clean bottom surface, all with one bit. Compare that to the earlier bits we talked about, the up cut or the down cut, you have to choose whether you want a clean top surface or a clean bottom surface. Boiled down, a compression bit is both an up cut and a down cut in one bit. So how do we use a compression bit? Well, the first two bits that we went over, your depth of cut didn't matter, meaning the increments and which you were taking material off didn't matter. With a compression bit, that is not true. In order to achieve the results that a compression bit will give us, it is extremely important that your first tool path, your initial plunge, is deeper than the upcut portion of that bit. Meaning, you need to plunge deeper to get past that upcut portion to get to the downcut portion so your top edge is being cut by the downcut section and not the upcut section. If you don't get deep enough, well, then basically you're using an upcut bit. I'll show you what this looks like here in a second when we do a test. But first, I wanna show you the specifications of two different compression bits. The first compression bit is a more traditional compression bit. And specifically, I wanna look where the spiral change happens, meaning where the upcut meets or changes to the down cut portion. So as you can see, the spiral change on this bit happens at 0.22 inches. So at a quarter inch plunge, your first pass, you will be past that up cut portion and to the down cut portion of the bit. And this will leave you the desired results. So you might be thinking a quarter inch depth of cut, that seems really aggressive. There's no way my CNC can do that. And for most desktop CNCs, you'd be correct. So obviously there are a lot of variables here your work holding, your feed rate, your RPMs, the material you're cutting. But what I found for the typical desktop CNC machine, no matter how you tweak all of those and what scenario, and if you take this material with this RPM and this feed rate, there just isn't a good recipe for the typical desktop CNC to use a quarter inch spiral change compression bit. But there's a solution, and this is a game changer for desktop CNC users. So the next compression bit is called a short flute compression bit. So let's look at the spiral change of this bit. So as you can see, the spiral change of this bit is 0.12 inches. So what that means is your depth of cut needs to be half of the other compression bit in order to achieve the same results. Now we're talking with desktop CNCs, an eighth of an inch, your plunge needs to be 0.12 to get below that 0.12 again to get to that down cut portion to achieve the results that we want. So when should I use this short flute compression bit? Well, anytime you're cutting through your profile and you want a clean top surface and bottom surface, then you should use it. If you are making any cuts that are less than the spiral change, then you shouldn't use it and you should either use the up cut or down cut bit. So as exciting as that is, there's still CNC's on the market that won't be able to use a compression bit because a eighth inch depth of cut isn't realistic. If you're running a $300 CNC machine, then this is not gonna work for you. But if you're running something like the Long Mill, the Shape Oco, the Onefinity, this is a bit that you must have in your arsenal. All right, so I wanna demonstrate this to you, what happens if you don't plunge deep enough and if you plunge deep enough, the results that you get. So let's head to the shop and check it out. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the compression bit test. And I wanted to note one thing. It's really important that you set your Z depth correctly because if you don't, you could risk not getting low enough. If you set your Z depth too high, you won't get low enough to get into the down cut portion. If you set your depth of cut at 1.25 or 1.3 and your Z depth or your bed or something isn't level, you still could see undesirable results, some fraying at the top edge because your Z depth was set incorrectly. All right, so here are the settings that I'm running this compression bit test at. All right, so I stopped the CNC after one pass. In comparison to the other ones, it's, it looks fantastic. Now I'm gonna let this continue to go and it's gonna cut through the bottom, I'm gonna cut this square out and we'll check the bottom surface to see how clean it is. All right, so let's look at here. So this is the top surface really clean. So like we've seen before, that's the down cut portion pushing down and then flipping it over. This is the back side, and it's not pulled up and frayed like the other one. So you can definitely see that action. It's, it's pulling 
pulling up. So this is what it's supposed to look like with a compression bit. Let's do a test where I don't plunge deep enough and I still get that up cut and I'll show you exactly what that will look like in comparison. All right, so here are the settings for the compression test where we don't plunge deep enough. All right, so this was after one pass. Uh, you can really see the difference here. Look how frayed this is. It looks exactly like the upcut did. And again, that is because we didn't get deep enough. So we went from looking like this with the correct settings with a compression bit to looking like this with the wrong settings with a compression bit. So as you can see, all three of these bits have a place in your shop, but without the short flute compression bit in your toolbox, a, as a desktop CNCer, you had to pick whether you wanted a clean top surface or a clean bottom surface. But with the lower spiral change that the short flute compression bit offers, now we can have the best of both worlds. If you're interested in learning any more about these bits, I'll leave links in the description below for you to check out. If you wanna learn more about how I've made thousands of dollars with my desktop CNC machines, check out this playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.